Welcome to the warm-up. Halloween this weekend, which has scared off Carly Osborne. But joining me as always is the ambassador, Marcus Gould. And here is what we've got <laughs> coming up on the show. Kilmarnock friends! We reunited Carly and Christopher Adger, who played a whopping 123 minutes together before Carly got injured back in 2017 to see how Chris is settling into life in TWA. It's uh, been easy to uh, adapt to, but also uh, quite challenging regarding the the opposition you play every single weekend so it's been uh, a great learning experience. Ten shows in and it's our first challenge of the season and literally a test of our nerves as we get the fright of our lives in the Shocktober Halloween mazes. <laughs> <laughs> On the road again. As always we'll have all the build up to our trip to Turf Moor tomorrow. Back to the old days, mate. Just me and you. We'll Here be alright, we won't we? We'll be alright, yeah. Yeah. Um, look, a lot's happened over the last week or so, so let's see what people are saying about Brentford. We'll go chronologically, and this is an evening standard journalist, Simon Collings, and his take on last week's match against Leicester. Just like their defeat against Chelsea, this loss to Leicester was a game Brentford will look back on and wonder how they came away from it with nothing. They were the better side over the course of the 90 minutes here at the Brentford Community Stadium, finishing the game with 54% of possession and 15 shots on goal. Leicester, in contrast, spent the majority of the match defending and their goals were two moments of quality that really were bolts from the blue. Marcus, first of all, look how livid Talia is behind that camera. Wow. She's fuming. Talia yep. is, of course, a Leicester fan, and she thinks it maybe went a different way. Um, but look, twice in consecutive games, as, as Simon said there, um, that we've dominated, well, it felt like, especially on Sunday, we've mm -hmm. dominated the game, but we've come away with nothing. What did you make of it? Yeah, we, we had really good spells in possession, created a lot of chances, um, but we've got to convert those chances now. That's, that's the name of the game at this level, I think. Um, we're showing a lot of bravery, which is natural for us. We're very committed in that, we're defending well, um, albeit the, the second goal, the winning goal, um, probably could have been defended better, but that's how it goes at times. When, you, when you're so brave, you're going to leave yourself open at, at the back at times. But um, again, there's positives out of it, but we've got to tighten up in, in front of goal in, in terms of, you know, converting those chances that we're creating. It's interesting what you said there about, about taking our chances. This is actually what Ian Wright said on Match of the Day too. He said, when you come from the Championship, you've got to take those chances. This is what I think you learn quicker than anything when you come up from the Championship. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, he can put the ball away. You can put the ball away. We're, we are learning that fast, mm -hmm. but is it is it easy just to say we need to put away our chances? Like, it's What easy. is it? Do we need to create better or do we, do we need to be more clinical? What is it? Well, I don't think we're going to get those clear-cut chances that we, we would have in the Championship. We're going to have half chances and it's you know, having the, the ability to create and, and take those half chances that do come because sometimes they're going to be few and far between. You know, we're defending superbly well, we're not conceding that many goals. Um, so defensively you can see that we're solid in midfield, yep, we're solid, we're competing. The hardest part of the game is putting that ball in the back of the net. And you said about chances. Should we have had a pen, mate? First of mm. all, I, I, look, Tali is fuming again. She's shaking her head. But Pontus has won that header. And he's got there before Kasper Schmeichel. VAR apparently looked at this. It, it cleaned him out, didn't he? It's a close one. I, I would have liked to have seen a penalty given. Um, but that's just how it goes. It works for us. It can work against us. Do you think, again, time of the game affects anything like that? Yeah, it's possible. But, but surely with VAR, you, that, you lose that side of that. And it's in the perfect position as well. You know, we've got cameras all over this stadium here. We can pick up all the angles of it. Yeah. We can clearly see, and, and I'm not sure why they didn't give it. Because anywhere else on the pitch, right, if you get to a header first and you get cleaned out, you normally win a free kick. Right? Yeah, it's just the consistency of the league, the, yeah. the, the officiating yeah. of it. And um, as I said, sometimes it goes for you, sometimes it goes against us. This time it went against us. Well, look. You mentioned it as well, Thomas said there were, there were still positives. This is what he said. He said, I hate losing no matter how well we performed, but it is what it is. There are many positive things to take away from the game and we need to learn. There are things we need to improve, especially on their second goal, which is one which can actually cost me mm. sleepless nights because that is an area where we are better than most teams. But we corrected it today and hopefully we are not going to see that 
at least for a long, long time. Honest as always from Thomas. Mm -hmm. And what about that second goal then would have kept him up at night? It's just probably with the ease. Don't forget Leicester have high quality in that middle third of the pitch. A lot of one and two touch play that broke our back line and it was an easy tap in for, for Madison. So um, that's what would have worried him is that the ease of the quality that Leicester showed and how could we have defended that a lot better. It, with that, we, we say this sometimes, is it different stages? There were, there were different there was different times where we could have stopped that. If you see, do you see what I mean? Yeah. There was because sometimes with a goal, goal you go, "Oh, that was X person's fault." But there were a few different stages there where maybe that could have been different, right? Yeah, they are still some way from goal. Yeah, um, and it's our offensive position at the moment for for that goal. So he will be disappointed in that, Thomas. Yeah, you know, we saw that at stages last season in the playoff semi-final here to Bournemouth. We're attacking, and then we we give that breakaway goal. Um, so that's what will probably keep him up at night. Is that are we learning from those mistakes from last year? Um, and to pay that, that price at the Premier League level is very costly as well. He mentioned positives, you mentioned positives. We want to end on a positive when we're talking about this game. What were they? I like how Matthias Janssen played. Oh, how about that uh, nutmeg come in. just in front of us here? How the, good the was that? The cheeky nutmeg, the strong left arm to protect it as well. Just failed on the final pass, but it was great that he, he's in the side. Um, I thought he played with a lot more freedom compared to the previous game. Um, and he's got to find his way back in this team. It's a tough team to, to, to get in, but I thought his, his performance was a positive on the day. Well, another positive was the return of Christopher Adja, who has made a fine start to his Brentford career, no doubt thanks to the time he spent with Carly Osborne up at Kilmarnock. So we got them back together in the week to reminisce about those old days, maybe talk about, you know, the Hamilton game where Carly gave away that 90th minute penalty in a 1-0 loss, or the 33 minutes they spent together on the pitch against Ross County before Carly got injured and limped off, never to play for the club again. Or maybe it was just about how he was settling in to TWA. So here you go, Carly Osborne and Christopher Adger. Sorry about that, mate. But this is probably the longest you two have spent together in a football stadium, really, isn't it? Chris, how are you, my man? Good to see you again. Yeah, it's uh, great to see you as well. Good, good. How are you, uh, how are you settling in? You've been here for a while now. How are you finding it? No, oh, it's been uh, three great months uh, from coming in, signing the contract to learning so much from the gaff, uh, the backroom staff, but also uh, getting to know so, uh, some of my great teammates, so it's been fantastic. And obviously you, you played in the Scottish Prem, you're now playing in the Premier League. Um, how have you find, found adjusting to that? No, it's been, it's been great. Uh, I think coming from Celtic, it's, uh, it's quite easy to, to take that step. It's, uh, it's a massive club in Glasgow that's expecting you to win every single game, so it's, uh, it's uh, been easy to uh, adapt to, but also uh, quite challenging regarding the the opposition you play every single weekend, so it's been uh, a great learning experience. Good stuff. Obviously, we was lucky enough to spend, well, maybe not lucky for you, but it was lucky <laughs> for me. We was lucky enough to spend some time at Kilmarnock together. And um, how do you feel, kind of, you know, that learning early on in your, in your kind of career, coming on loan from Celtic? How do you find that time at Kilmarnock helped you prepare for what was next after that? You know, my, my six months spell in Kilmarnock was uh, fantastic. I played with some great centre halves and learned the learned trade from them, and also. <laughs> For me, for me, it was so important to go out, play uh, prop uh, men's football, play as a centre half, and really learn the, the position because uh, I signed as number ten from uh, from Norway to to go to Celtic, and then had to learn a new position. So it was uh, a great learning. I was going to say that early on in your career, when you were younger, obviously you did play, kind of play that ten centre midfield role. Um, how did you find the adjustment, kind of dropping back a bit, and, and ended up being a centre back? Yeah, it was something I had to uh, get used to. I always knew that I was going to be a centre half, but in, in my early days, I felt it was more beneficial for the, my development to play in the midfield. Stuff happens quicker there and you have to be quicker on the ball there. So, But as soon as I came to Celtic, Brent Rogers uh, really helped me a lot. He, we had a few good conversations where he told me that my, my biggest, uh, my best position was centre-half and that's where I, I could develop into the best player. So from, from then it's only been the defensive side, yeah. Well, I was going to say, he's definitely not been wrong as he because you're, you're progressing into a fantastic centre-half. You've been brilliant since you've been here. In terms of, you know, you spent some time with Brendan Rodgers, what's the comparison between him and Thomas? Because for me, Thomas has been sensational since he's been at Brentford. 
and I'm sure you maybe think similar. Yeah, I think I think uh, what Brent did for me in Celtic and what the Gaffers started uh, doing here uh, for me and Brentford has been very similar. As you say, they they're so focused on the, on the details. Every single day, it's, you play once a week, twice a week, but the the minutes in between are uh, even more important. Almost so, uh, the analyzing part the Gaffer does, the way he speaks to you, and also the way. They uh, they really care about how you are outside the pitch as well. I think it's very important. They uh, speak to the gaffer several times over during the week. He asks how my family are, how my missus is, how, how I'm enjoying life outside of football here in London. And I think that's something that's very important. You have to see the, the full picture and uh, he's very good at that. Yeah, I was going to say, they, they seem like managers who are very good man managers. You know, they, they really care about their players, trying to get the, make sure they're in the best environment for them. And I think that's, that's, that's really good. But getting back to stuff on the pitch, um, you know, you've played in some, some big games already. Obviously, I think Liverpool was one of the standout ones for me when I, when I was watching. I thought he was fantastic on that day. Um, what's, what was it like playing against Salah? You know, he's an unbelievable striker. How did you find that experience? Well, the, the Liverpool experience for me was incredible. Uh, my, my whole family have supported uh, Liverpool their whole life. And uh, obviously now they're massive Brentford supporters, but they were in the stand there watching their son play Premier League uh, against uh, one of the best uh, teams in the world uh, and uh, the, the way we went toe-to-toe -to -toe with them uh, created so many great chances. We, we defended well even, even considering we conceded three goals. We did some great moments and it was just an uh, incredible experience and I guess it was incredible for the Brentford fans as well. Yeah. Speaking about great strikers, you've been fortunate enough to, to train and, and play alongside Harlan. Um, there's been big talk of him potentially coming into the Premier League. How, do you, how did you find your experience when you train with him and, and what's he like to, to train against and play against? And how do you think he would, he would do in the Premier League if he, if he ever made the move? No, obviously it would be very, very a big challenge for him to come to the Brentford Community Arena, but he's, uh, he's a fantastic striker and uh, a very nice guy outside the pitch as well. So the way he conducts himself, uh, the way he uh, perform every single weekend and the way he is as a, as a lad outside the pitch as well, he's, uh, he's a great guy. Yeah. Good stuff. Well, look. Thank you for your time, Chris. It's been a pleasure to watch you, and I'm, I'm pleased we've managed to reignite. Who would have thought our paths would have crossed oh, in this incredible. way? Um, incredible. But no, honestly, thank you for your time, and I hope you enjoy a long stay, successful stay at Brentford. Hopefully. Sorry, Carly, mate. Proper cheap shot that one, especially with him not being here. Um, harsh. Harsh, really harsh. But I mean, fair. who am I to take the mick out of any <laughs> professional footballers, really? Um, like we say, good news with Chris coming back in uh, last week. What have you made of his start? Yeah, he's just fitted in so seamlessly into the team. Um, gives us a lot going forward down that right hand side, even though he's a defender, but he's not, he's not frightened to, to get down the outside right and uh, deliver crosses, put a presence in the box as well. So I'm really pleased with that. But above that, he loves defending. He's, he's one that celebrates great defending. Yeah, well, well look, good news on, on Christopher coming back, but obviously there was some bad news towards the end of that game with David Rea colliding with Ayozi Perez. Um, he, was, he carried on for the rest of the game, but we've since discovered, of course, that he suffered a posterior cruciate knee injury. Um, Marcus, how big a blow is it losing Davids? It's a big blow because he's so important in terms of how we build our attacks from the back with his distribution. Um, so we, we will miss that from him as a, as a personality in the team. But I'm sure Alvaro will step in and, and, and step up to the plate with that as well. I think his distribution allegedly is very, very good. Glad you said that, mate, because I've had a really? little look. Have you? I've had a little look. Of course, like last season, he spent time at Huesca in La Liga. So I checked out actually his stats and his passing stats for his time there. And we've got them here. Passes attempted, 818. Passes completed, 613, which is a pass completion percentage of 74.9. To put that into perspective, David, this season so far, has a pass completion rate of 64.4%. Mm -hmm. um, look, we, we know as well that David is up there with the best in the mm -hmm. Premier League with his longer passing. There's another stat there that Alvaro scores very highly in that is his long passing. Attempted 441, completed 241, which is a pass completion of 54.6. Mm -hmm. David, this year, his pass completion on those long passes was 43.4. Right. So obviously the sample sizes are slightly different. Alvaro's are over 22 games, but still very positive. Marcus, Alvaro's ability with his feet, surely that would have been one of the attributes that the club would have looked at when they were signing him in the first place, right? Of course, that's one of the, the main attributes, um, especially in our team. We're a passing team. 
We've got an array of part, uh, dif distribution in that from the goalkeeper's position and it helps to build our attacks. Naturally, yes, you want your goalkeeper to save shots. That's what he's primar primarily in there for. Stop goals going in. But if you can add you know, the, the distribution to it, that's a massive benefit to how we play. But this kid, he, he'll be totally fine. You know, yeah. He's played the league. He's played against Messi, hasn't he? Yeah, he's so, played play against Real Madrid, Barcelona. He's not going to be overawed by exactly. some of these so clubs. He'll, so. be, he'll be fine. It's just getting him in there. Confidence will grow each game. And I'm sure he's going to be huge in goal for us. Is that it? As a goalkeeper, do you need a little, a couple of games to bed in? I guess that Stoke game would have helped. Yeah, going away to Stoke's always going to help. Um, especially when you can win a game. Yes, we've got a tough match over the next day or so um, against Burnley and we know what they're about. They're quite robust in terms of getting that ball into the box. That's going to be a great test for him. Can he handle that? I'm sure he will handle that, but you've got great defenders in front of him as well. And we've seen this so many times, haven't we, at Brentford. Uh, we lose a player through injury or, or, or being sold mm -hmm. and we may be slightly worried, but the perfect example is last season, Christian Norgaard getting injured mm -hmm. and Vitali coming in, right? Yeah. Oh, that's the mentality of the club. You know, there shouldn't be any sort of panic. And we've seen the transition of the club over the last five, six years where top players have left, moved on um, and out the team. But we've already got that replacement within the camp already. So we're in a very strong position. Alvaro is a great kid coming into it um, and he'll be totally fine in there. He knows what he's coming into. As I said, nothing should phase him. He's played against Lionel Messi, he's yeah. played against Real Madrid, Barcelona. Nothing's going to phase him in the Premier League. It's just now is his time to, to bed himself into it. Well, he made his third start of the season against Stoke. We've just mentioned his long passing. We'll get on this long pass to Ivan and get on this touch, Ivan. How hard is it to bring a ball down from the halfway line, Marcus, when you've got it from your goalkeeper's goal kick? It can be hard, but that shows you the quality that we've got within this team. That is ridiculous, It mate. is ridiculous, but... Dion Burton was good at that, wasn't he? He was good at bringing that ball into play, backing into players, yeah. using his, his upper body strength to get hold of it and bring people into play, if not turn and score himself. Unbelievable touch, unbelievable touch. On the subject of Ivan, mm -hmm. um, a lot of people when the team was named for Stoke maybe winced a bit and was like, should we be risking Ivan in a cup game midweek? Mm -hmm. uh, especially when we've, we've maybe had a couple of injuries lately as it is. What were your thoughts when you saw that very strong side that Thomas put out? I thought it was very encouraging. I thought it was, it was a good selection as well in terms of you know what, we've got a game to go and play, let's go and win. We know what's at stake, a quarter-final place. We've done that. Ivan scored, so his confidence is going to be higher for the next league match. Um, Sergi as well, again, another player that's been superb this season in the right wing-back position. Adding goals to his game from that position is, is vital as well. So again, we're getting players with their confidence up now. Okay, so is, is that what it is? Because that was, I think, a massive thing last year about the cup run. Mm -hmm. The winning mentality it breeds confidence. And when you've had back-to-back -back defeats, Mm -hmm. Even though it was against Stoke City and, and Championship, no disrespect to them, it, it's still a win and it, it gets that winning confidence back. Of course yeah. it does. And it gives you know, the sort of fringe players like Charlie Good yep. a start. And you know, you've got to look at Charlie. He is so reliable when he comes into the team. He's never let the team down. So you know he can tick that box. You can put him in there, no problems at all, and he'll contribute, along with the other players that, that started that match. Well, Sergi got the first goal and he had this message for the fans in reply to a video that we put up. Uh, he said, and that's why we go out there. We give you everything for this club. Thank you all for coming to support us on a cold Wednesday night at Stoke. That's incredible. Safe journey home to all of you. Ambassador, a lot of great performances on the night, but performance of the day has to go to the fans that travelled. What an unbelievable effort to go up there, especially when you've got Burnley on Saturday, mm -hmm. what, three days after. Yeah, it's a tremendous effort, but we know we've got that within our fan base. We've got a good hardcore that will always go away, no matter where it is, midweek. They're there in, and, and singing out their hearts. They just want that performance. Yep, they do care about the, the result end of it, but once they can see your heart and soul is going into that performance, it makes their journey a lot more palatable on the way back. Well, remember, the draw for the quarterfinals of the Carabao Cup is live on Soccer AM tomorrow morning from 10.30. Come on, Jimmy and Fenners, get us a good draw. Uh, that's the head of the long trip up north to Burnley, which falls the day before Halloween. And last Halloween, you may remember the ambassador thinking he was hilarious, pulling this little prank on me. Hello, mate. Hey, bestie, just up in the tea room there, making a few yeah. tea. Which ones do you want? I might need a hand. Uh, I'll come down. Come down, have a little look. All right, mate. Mm. Oh, <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, well done, mate. Well, we've upped it this year. This is the first challenge of the season. We love the football, but sometimes it's fun just to put a bit of the nonsense in, isn't it, mate? You've got to just mix it up. Mm -hmm. So thank you to the great people at Tully's Farm near Crawley. We went down to their Shoptoberfest to go round the mazes. The deal was me, Marcus Carley. We've just got to stay calm. Whoever stays the calmest is the winner. Whoever doesn't is the loser. Simple as that. <laughs> Warning. The following footage contains strobe lighting and some Halloween effects that may not be suitable for children under the age of nine, following the recommendation of the event. It also contains former footballers screaming at extremely high decibels, so keep your remote handy. Right, here we go lads, the first challenge of the season and it's a Halloween special. We're here at Shoptoberfest in Tully's Farm and we're going to be going through the Chop Shop Garage. But but we're going to be wearing a heart monitor on each. So we're going to record our heartbeats at the start and then we're going to see whose heart goes the highest and that person is the loser and has got to do a forfeit. <laughs> I am not looking forward to this. I can hear the chainsaws. How are you feeling, mate? No, I'm feeling confident. Yeah? Big tough centre half, so go through this with ease, won't I? Let's see what he's made of. Let's see what he's made of. Let's see how tough he really is. Isn't Come on then, boys. Well done, chop, chop, mister. Come on, turn down, my name, clip, clip. Down a bit, mechanic we got now. But well, listen, you ain't got nothing. Oh, you! 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 Oh, you
Big Tom centre back. <laughs> yeah, you're the new for the road. There must be a centre back. Uh, Scooty back. Come, man. They're there around the corner. One, two, three. Right, lads, it's the end of the challenge. Yeah. Uh, we've been joined by some mates, some yeah. quite close mates here. Uh, how do you boys think you've done? I felt all right. I'm a bit worried about you two, man. I thought, I thought, I thought you were the top centre back. No, I am. I and started strong. Centre, and then... centre midfielder. Look, I'm, I've never thought I was tough. I've wow. never got anything. I'll, I'll I'll hold my hands up. Tough. Thanks, mate. Tough. Oh, look at him. Look at these. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> all right. That's what he's got underneath. Well, look, mind. we'll find out who's won the challenge on tomorrow's show. Yeah. And then it's a forfeit I'm time. Approached <laughs> right, let's go. I knew that how much fun was that? I Honestly, so good. It looks like we've over-egged it, me and Carly, a bit there, probably, but it was proper scary and none of that was acting. Um, we need to find out who won, though, right? Carly's yeah, let's, not let's, here, let's he doesn't out. know. Right, so, looking at the heart rates, this is your one went up only by 41. That's right. Mine went up by 56. And Carly's went up by 97. Up. Is that the tough tackling Next centre back? The nail <laughs> centre half. So that means you're the winner, I'm second. That's right. And then Carly is in third. Look, forfeits wise this year, mate, we thought we'd change it up. So we're actually going to do a season long leaderboard, and then the loser overall will do a forfeit. So you're out in front with the first win of the season. I think it's yep. going to be three points for a win, one point for second, and none for third. You get nothing um, for a bronze or oh, a silver. Look, we'll worry about that, that later. Nah. Right, back to the football, back to the football. Uh, Burnley Saturday. Have the last two results changed the mentality going into this one? Um, maybe. I think everyone will be thinking we should be looking to win this match or we need to win this match. And that's the different pressures now in this Premier League, is that you're going to lose games, you're going to need to win some games. I think the next two games are vitally tough for us. I think we're totally fine when we play like the you know the top four, five, six uh, clubs, but playing the the lower end of the the table clubs, that's where it really matters. I think for us is can we get through those tough games? The game falls on uh, the ninth anniversary. Um, of, well, Sean Dyche is, is ninth mm. anniver year anniversary at Burnley. Um, what have you made of the job that he's done there, and what mm. can we expect Saturday? Well. You're going to expect what you've seen over the last nine years. Hard working, industrious, um, full of commitment. Um, but it just shows that he, he's, he's comfortable with his selections of squads over that nine year period. Um, a lot of commitment's gone into that. And I think that transmits to the players that he brings in. They, they show a lot of loyalty to him. They, they work hard for him. Yeah, I like that they go 4-4-2. Um, yeah. A bit old school, I like that. Um, like I said, I've got that big man, little man partnership mm. up top. Chris Wood being the, the focal point. I'm scared to say this because you don't want to jinx stuff, but I, I looked <laughs> it up and actually 35 of his 47 goals for Burnley have come after Christmas, which is really weird. Why do you think that happened? Is that a thing? Like strikers doing better over, after Christmas? It's weird that. It is a little bit weird, but you know what? It's just his cycle of scoring goals. Yeah. Sometimes you get strikers that will have an amazing first half and then sort of blow out of steam the second half. Yeah. But as long as you're getting the right amount of goals, that's, that's the most important thing. I hope I've not jinxed this. There was a few more stats I'm not going to say because <laughs> I am proper superstitious. Um, it's likely to be a reunion with uh, Tarki, James Tarkovsky, of course. Yeah. Whatever people's opinions are on him, he was a superb player for us, wasn't yeah, he? And he, he was. did, he's done brilliantly for Burnley, which is why he's often linked with moves to other clubs. How do you see that matchup versus Ivan? I'm looking forward to that matchup because I think it's, it's a battle of the brawn and I think it will come down to the battle of the brains. Can, can Ivan outsmart him, outthink him? I think Ivan can do that for sure. Um, but it's a tough, tough sort of competition against them up, up top somewhere. But we've got the same matchup with uh, Wood up against our defence. So um, yeah. 
there's battles all around. The, main, the most important one is that one in the middle. Can we dominate there? Because I think once we get a grip of that game there, we're going to create those chances for the front two. A lot of people saying that Danger Man could be Corne. He, he's done well yeah. so far for me. He's not lasted 90 minutes actually, but he's got three goals in two starts. Um, is it a case of stopping that supply line then? Yeah, it is a, it's always a case of stopping things at source. Cutting off that oxygen to the forwards. That's, it's, it's important for that midfield to do that. And obviously it gives the, the three centre-halves an opportunity to defend the box really well. Get into positions quite early and, and take out the dangers. But I think we'll, we'll do all right tomorrow. We've got a great, great line-up, I'm sure. Um, and it's going to be a tough game. We know, look, going to Burnley is never going to be easy. No, no matter what time of year you go, it could be, it could be August for, for argument's sake, go in there. Um, it's always going to be a tough place, but to go there in October, November, here we go. We've got to show what we're made of. We have, we have. There's a lot of big matchups. A lot of people will be asking, who's going to be in the FPL team this week? Well, I'll tell you what, I've, got, I've picked someone this week, mate. Who have you gone for now? Well, I've gone for a little curveball, right? What curveball? I'm going Pontus Janssen. Do you want to know why? Because he's getting, what, is he getting closer? Well, this is what I think, right? Look, look on these stats, mate. Right. He only costs 4.7 million and yeah. he's got the joint highest points out of any Bees player this year alongside Ethan Pinnock. Mm -hmm. He's also got the same amount of assists as Trent Alexander-Arnold wow. with three and he's got 163 bonus points. Like you say, Ambassador, surely, 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 he's surely got, he's got to score soon as well. Well, the last four or five games, he's come so close to scoring and I'm just like, it's going to happen. It has to happen. He's played superbly well this year. I think he's probably, as we've said before, fair. He's probably better suited to the Premier League than the Championship yeah. level. You know, where you get that extra little bit of time. He's got the quality anyway. The Championship is so ferocious. There's no let up. But I think in the Premier League, it's a different type of ferociousness. It's that mental capacity to to stay switched on for the duration of 90 minutes. Yeah, I think I genuinely think he's he's been even better this year. Mm. Than he, than he was last year. Um, what do you make of my choice? Let us know in the comments below and who are you putting in your fantasy teams this week? Now, last week, we asked you to comment with your team name for a chance to win a copy of FIFA 22 signed by David Raya. Um, thanks to everyone that got in touch. The ambassador, I'm going to get you to pick your favourite for us. I'm still on Subutio. I don't do this You're stuff. You're going to pick our favourite for us. I'm going to go for Kinder in Buemo by Jam with Ham. Jam with Ham is a terrible username. I mean, I'll be honest. I'm just trying to picture it. I'm I, just like, I, go, I don't even think some of the names have been great this week. I'm not, I don't like to dig you lot out, but <laughs> I didn't think some of them were very good. I'm sorry, sorry. I've got to be honest sometimes, don't I? Um, but well done to Jam with Ham. Uh, send your address to video at brentfordfc.com and we'll get that signed copy of FIFA to you. That's it for this week, mate. I loved it. That uh, went smooth. It no did. No cops. I, I know we've given him a bit of banter, but I do miss Carly. What, the diva? <laughs> oh, I you think said it's it. been alright. Yeah, no, it has, but I do miss him. <laughs> yeah, Hope he's having fun him. on the stag do. Um, next week, we'll be chatting to Matthias Jensen on Monday, so looking forward to that one. Until then, safe travels to those of you travelling up to Burnley, and hopefully we'll be coming back down with three points. Come on, you bees. You reds!